Hello Facebook, Steve Woody here for Midday Mastery and today is episode 23. 23! Wow, I can't believe how many of these we've done now and today is all about content. So, interestingly, I have just typed in the title to Facebook, hit record and I'm kind of half set up. So, the content that I wanted to give you today isn't going to be the content you're actually going to get, which I think is quite good because what I wanted to talk to you about was structuring out your content and how to go through it. What I'm actually going to talk to you about is the importance of creating content on the fly. Because one of the things that I found, specifically with my content creation, is that I struggle sometimes. If I sit down and plan out and work out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, I mean, and I've had it with, um, with people that I've been around as well where they will create content and they'll script it and then they'll record it and they'll have to edit it or they'll record it again and they'll record it again and then they'll have to edit it and the whole process sometimes takes about a week like I've seen I've seen doing a video take someone over a week before and I've seen other people with content where they you know they they put it up really really quickly but it looks crap and so how do you find that balance and that fine line of creating content that's good content? Robin, hello, how are you doing? Rhett, how are you doing? Nice to see you all, by the way. How do you find that fine line? How do you define creating content that's valuable, that's not just waffling, that actually helps people, that helps you? Because like, when we look at content, like if you look at... There's two main purposes for content on a website. Hold on a sec, let me flip the camera around because I've just realised that in my hasty... I was Just to let you know, basically I was, I'm was i working with a, a client at the moment and we're... Uh, I make content, nice, yeah, right, you definitely make content, mate, so much of it. I'm working on, I'm handing over a client's website today and it's a big site and we've been working on it for a while and it's really, it's going to be amazing, I can't wait to show it off. Um, but at the moment, in fact you can kind of just see it in the background there, let me just hide that because... It's not live yet and you shouldn't be looking at that site. Um, the whole purpose um, of me doing that this morning is um, getting it all live and handing it over. But it just ran over a little bit. So I was like, oh, it's midday, I've got to do my midday mastery. So kind of jumped into it. And that's the point, is that sometimes content, you have to be able to do on the fly. When I speak on stage, I always make sure, and this is something I was taught, at, like one of my first speaking gigs, I was always told, when you speak on stage you should always make sure that you've got a speech in your back pocket. That was what I was told. And what was meant by that is that when I spoke, the projector wasn't working. And I had all of these slides, I created all of this content that I was going to deliver at this speech, and I was going to deliver it in order, and I was going to do my, um, my slide and my presentation. And because the slides weren't working, I panicked. Because I, in my head, I had a plan on how it was going to work. And because it didn't work like that, I started to panic, and I was like, oh, what do I do, what do I do? And I know a lot of people in public speaking, they get this, where they go on stage and they're like, oh. see, I don't get that. Because when I walk on stage, I know as much as the audience. Like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. In fact, most of my speeches when I get on stage, I actually ask the audience what they want me to talk about. I say, would you like me to talk about business or would you like me to talk about my journey? It's your choice. And I'll, ideally, what I'll do is I'll have some bullet points. So I'll normally have, in terms of when I'm going to talk, any subject I'm going to talk on, I'll have one main bullet point, which will be the main subject. And then I'll normally have three topics or mini bullet points. Just three things that if ever I feel like I'm waffling, I can bring it back onto, uh, on, I'll bring it back, the topic onto conversation or subject, I can come back to that because I've got an overview. So going back to this, because this is what I want to talk about, right? Content. You create content for two reasons. Two reasons, and that's it. The first reason is you're going to create content for SEO. The second reason is you're going to create content for people. That's it. That is it. That is, in terms of your website, in terms of online, if we're going to chunk up to the highest level, you're going to create content because you either want to be seen, but ideally, people want to read it. Now, why is this important? The idea of creating content, if you're going to create content for SEO, there are things you need to consider. You need to look at keywords. You need to make sure that your content is created in a certain way that Google likes it and wants to know about it. And so it needs to have, you know, there needs to be keywords. And the other thing to consider as well when you're doing this is obviously the structure of your content. 
for the SEO's perspective. You have to lay out your content in a certain way. Now, hey, Chris, hey, Benjamin, hey, everyone, by the way. I'm just going to read through these comments very, very quickly. Hey, hey, hey. As a teacher, I learned to co-create my lessons and lots of the content with my students. That's a great idea. See, this is what I like doing. A lot of the stuff I like doing now is, and you'll find this with a lot of people, is somebody, something will happen. Something will happen. Somebody will, uh, like a, a, a social figure or somebody who's out there, something will happen in their life, like, I don't know, they'll get robbed or, 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 or they'll crash a car or something, and they'll create content around that life experience and they'll make it relevant. So, and they'll try and connect a dot between that and the business. And so... I see it a lot with people and what I'm trying to do here is get you to understand like when you're creating content, why are you creating that content? Whatever that content is, are you creating it just because you're trying to get content out there? Like for example, why am I creating these Facebook Lives? Why am I creating these Facebook Lives? What's the purpose of them? Well, one part of them is for kind of like for SEO. But it's not just SEO because there's social media marketing as well and there's also a pay-per-click. There's like there's different ways. And so the content that I'm creating, part of it is to get ranked, to get seen. And not just SEO in terms of Google, but I mean, considering that I'm doing video, YouTube, Facebook, because Facebook at the moment loves the content. And in fact, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I went to an event at the weekend and the idea of delivering content was like, you should do videos. And that's what they said. And I was like, you could embellish a little bit and give us a little bit more information. Well, the reality is, for, for those of you that know, YouTube and Facebook are fighting each other. So the two big companies out there, they're competing. And what they're competing for at the moment is video space. And so as you know, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So you may think of SEO as written content, but YouTube's clever. YouTube can pick up on the words that you say and it can actually analyze the content of your voice. And in fact, Adobe's just launched a program around this as well, Adobe Voice. I don't actually know if that's the official name of it. But you can, like, whereas in Photoshop you can edit files, you can now do that with your voice. You can record, Adobe's got a new program where you can record your voice and it will analyse that voice and you can type a word and it will create your voice over that word. And then you can take bits out and you can move it about. You can completely manipulate someone's sentence. Like through this new software that's coming out. It's crazy when you look at it. What like the whole world of voice and audio and because we live in a world where everything's really people don't have time to read anymore. Some people still like it, but the majority of people, when you look at the up and coming generations and you look at the attention span that people have, people don't have a lot of time, so they really want to get things quickly. So YouTube being the second biggest search engine is fine because when you look at like there are other search engines, like you've got Bing, you've got Yahoo, but like we all know Google, right? Google is like the main search engine. So when you think SEO, you think Google, you think that whole side of things. But the reality, and you think blogs, and you think like that whole world. But the reality is like you can get a lot more traffic a lot quicker through YouTube. If you create a how-to video and you upload it to YouTube, you can probably get your eyeballs on it a lot quicker than you could if you were to do some keyword research and structure out a blog post and SEO it. Because a lot of people fall into this trap when they create content. Oh, I need to SEO, I need to SEO, I need to SEO. For most startups and most business owners, like when you look at SEO, SEO is going to be a three-month-plus strategy. All right, Your initial thing that you're going to start with is probably social media marketing. That is going to be naught to ongoing. So, yeah, I don't know what I'll call X. X can be ongoing. So, this will be sort of three months ongoing. And then you've got pay per click, which again, naught to ongoing. So, the idea when you look at your marketing channel, if you're like, these are the three, I mean, there's other things as well. But if we're talking about online marketing and you're talking about getting content out there, you're either going to be doing social media marketing, which is where most people start. Most people start with their Facebook posts, their Twitter feeds, their Snapchat, their Instagram. I'm going to create a social media page, and I'm, and and you know we we see I've seen people that create a new page every bloody day, new group, new page, throw some content in there, and then it dies off, and then new page, new group, new content, and so the cycle continues. So this is where most people start because initially it's free, uh, it's the easiest way to get started, and it's a way for people to get re like to get real traction really quickly for people to see you. So when you transition from your social media marketing into your pay-per-click, 
as in you start paying for ads and you start looking at that side of things, then you realize like this is where the real power is. This is where in a business, this is where you need to be because this is where it's scalable. So the idea of SEO is it's nice, but unless you find a, a really good keyword that everyone's searching for, that's got no competition, I mean, the reality is they're, they're few and far between. And if there's a great keyword, most people are already going to have been competing for it. And Google recently halved their ad, like the, the ad space that they're, they're offering. So there's more competition for less space. So in terms of SEO, when you're, when you're doing your PPC, uh, you, you, you have to organically. Okay, when, you, when you're doing, when you're doing um, SEO for Google, it has to be organic because doing, doing Google AdWords, I mean, you can get some traffic from it, of course, but it takes a lot of work. So when you're looking at creating your content for SEO organically, because that's where you want to get ranked because it's free, it takes a lot of time, a lot of work, and you're not going to get anything really for the first three months. And most people just don't have that time, they want it instantly. So social media marketing, so you need to know your audience. Who are you creating content for? Is it for SEO purposes or is it for actual people? Because when you're creating content for social media marketing, you're not really doing it for SEO, you're doing it for the people. So you need to understand that. Now, let's just forget about pay-per-click at the moment because that's a whole different thing and we'll cover that in another video because like that, I could do a week just on that alone. And in fact, I've done loads of videos on that already, so I don't want to fight on that. But let's go back to what I was talking about here. YouTube and Facebook, they're competing with each other at the moment. They want to both be the dominant video space. Now, YouTube is, but Facebook is trying to catch up. So what they're allowing advertisers to do at the moment is to boost their Facebook lives, is to get very easily and accessible Facebook live videos out there. And that's why these videos, they rank really well. You know, I did a Facebook Live the other day. I had like 2,000 views on it. So it's a really quick and easy way to get instant engagement because now Facebook notifies you. Someone's, one of your friends is doing a live. Look, there's a live. Hey, Facebook Live, Facebook Live, Facebook Live. Get into Facebook Live. You know, Twitter tried it with Periscope and there was all these different channels and all these different companies that are trying to push it. Instagram with their like short videos. But Facebook Live is dominating the marketplace for, for, for content right now. Everyone and their dog has got a selfie stick and an iPhone and their Facebook Live in, including me. Why do you think I'm doing this right now? You know, yes, I'm recording it on Facebook Live, but then I download it. And guess where I put it? Straight on YouTube. Because you need to have a content plan. So the idea is, yes, you do want to consider SEO for any of your pages, anything you're writing. But you really need to understand that the content you're creating, why are you doing it? You don't want, like, if you look at... Go back to yesterday's video when we talked about the wireframe and we talked about home page. And let's say, right, I've got this introduction section and we're going to put some text in here. You don't want to create that just for SEO because a person who's going to buy from you will come to this page and go, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why is it struck? What, like, you know, you're talking in, in terms of, and we've seen it like with keyword research, you, you just pile your keywords in there and you just like organize it in a certain way. So there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance between the two, and it's in this happy medium here. It's going to be more weighted towards people, but when you consider SEO and you've got an awareness of SEO, and you use SEO good practice, like you make sure that you've structured your page into headings. So you've got heading one, heading two, depending on the importance of the article. And also you do, you break it down into different subsections. But that, as well as for SEO, is also good for people because of the attention span. People don't want to read a huge page anymore. Most, unless, like, unless they've dived in. Like, if they're on a specific page where they want to read, like, a PDF or they want to go through detail, great. But on a home page and a landing page, small little blocks. Small little blocks of content that get people just to read through A, B, C. Bit, bit, bit. Little bit, little bit, little bit. That's all people need. Short attention spans. So you need to understand that. And Google knows that because they're adapting and they're updating their algorithm for people. Because when you consider what is Google, when you look at Google, what is their mission statement? It's to get quality content to the people who need it. That's what they want to do. So if you've got quality content and you're delivering it in the right way and Google knows you exist, because we talked about this yesterday, when you have your website, you then need to submit your website to Google. Through webmaster tools, you need to make sure that your, your website is, is, is out there and so they know about it. But when you're creating content, and I'm going to just create, I'm going to give you a content plan now. When you're creating your content, 
you have to understand the first thing, the most important thing, is who are you creating it for? So, what I want to tell you now, I'm going to give you a little content strategy. Very, very quick and simple and easy content strategy and just something to consider um, because this is really going to help you. And this is what I do. And this can be adapted, by the way. I've heard YouTube has been ser uh, uh, has searchable lives. Facebook doesn't, but Facebook is where people are. Well, this is it, right? So, people are on Facebook and that's why, you know, I've got 12 viewers now, by the way. Thanks, everyone. And in fact, watch this. 12 viewers. Can you all do me a favour, all 12 of you? Look, this is just purely a social experiment. Can you all like... All like this right now. And can everyone type a comment? Just say hi or something. I want to show you the engagement. I want to show you this as how we can go from 12 viewers. Let's get this up to 20 viewers. Not just because I want more viewers, but just as an experiment. Everyone like it. Everyone just comment something in. Because the more you like and the more you comment, the more Facebook is going to push this up. And you're going to get more interactions with it. Hi. Yeah, everyone just say hi. Everyone say hi and let me know where you are. And if everyone likes it, watch it. Dylan, how you doing? Rhett, hey, so... This is why Facebook is so powerful, right? It's the interactions. Oliver, hey dude, how you doing? Um, CJ, good to see ya. Ian, hi. Hey guys. Wow. So now, what will happen? Just uh, Steve Bentley, good to see ya. How you doing, mate? Um, Rhett and Career, fantastic. So now, uh, Facebook's just notifying me that we've got so, like loads of comments now. So it says, conversation started, 10 comments so far. So now what's happened is we've just hit a, um, we've just hit a benchmark with Facebook where we're now getting interaction. Hey, Maria, how you doing? Sure, how you doing? Columbus, Ohio, wow. Lydia, how you doing? Hello. So now what's going to happen is because we're getting this engagement, Facebook's going to go in its algorithm, oh, this is a popular video. Let's push it out. Look, 13 viewers now. It's going to start to go up. It will trickle slowly, but the more we engage, because now you've stopped engaging, now you've stopped engaging, it will die off again. But if you, keep in, if you keep that engagement going, that's why when people are doing it, you see people like, like me, like me, send me likes, send me hearts. You see, all, And then those videos, like, peop, this is what I find interesting with social media. People who beg for like, please like me, please like me, please send me hearts, they get, they get more exposure. And it's kind of like, well, but of course you get exposure, but it's not because you're delivering good content, it's because you're begging for it. So the idea is the more you engage and the more consistency there are, the more Facebook notifies that and sees, okay, right, great, now we're going to... So now, now it's just said, 10 people have reacted so far to this video. It's just, showed, it's just popped, popped up and showed me that. So again, we've hit another benchmark. So now the more we do this, the more interactions we get, the more views we're going to get, the more it will get out there. And so that's why when you consider what content you're going to create, when we look at the content... Look, this is getting valuable now, right? When, like, forget SEO for now. I've just showed you that we've covered that. I'm not interested in SEO. I'm interested in how we can quickly get content out there to the right people because content is like news, right? It's like you could do an article, like a really, really good, valuable article, and I highly recommend, like there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I highly recommend that once a month, once a month, and everyone can do this once a month, once a month, you sit down and you plan out a valuable piece of content. Once a month. If you look at any of the top marketers, you look at Russell Brunson, you look at Brendan Bouchard, you look at Chris Cardell, you look at anyone out there who is, you look at Mike Dillard, you look at all of these people who are out there doing what they do. They're constantly bombarding you with messages and they're constantly doing their social media marketing, but they only normally have one marketing piece and they'll normally change it and they'll split test it so there'll be different images there'll be different titles but it'll all lead to the same thing because what you want to do ideally is once a month you want to create one valuable article and you want to get as much engagement to that as possible now throughout the month you're going to have loads of little different things that are going to push people to that one article okay but this is what you want to do. You want to push as much as you can to one valuable article a month. Maybe your ideal market wants blog as well as video. Absolutely. So this is, this is where we need to go back. If you remember some of the earlier videos when we were talking about customer avatars, you need to know your customer avatar. You need to know who you're talking to. Because some people prefer to read. Like, for example, if I'm targeting busy executives, then I'm going to be looking at my podcast and I'm going to be looking at audio because they'll probably be listening in their car. They're not, well, especially now, like you're not allowed to actually watch a video. So I don't want to do video for people if I'm considering my target audience are in their car. I'm going to be doing audio. 
podcasts, I'm going to be doing like sound bites and sound clouds and things like that. However, if somebody is maybe going to be on a train, like if my commuter is going to be on a train and not in a car, chances are, especially if they're in London on the underground, they're going to be in and out of signal. So they may want to download an article that they can read whilst they've got no Wi-Fi. So you really need to start considering who and where your market is before you're doing any of your content. CJ, I absolutely agree with that. But look, let's go back to this because I want to give you a content strategy and I'm very conscious of time. 20 minutes already. I'm going to end this soon. One valuable piece that you really consider and think about. Because look, this is where people do get challenged. They try and create, oh, I want this to go viral. I want this to go viral. And like, you get the people on social media who are like, please like my video. Please like my video. Please, please interact with me. Please interact with me. And then you interact and all of a sudden the viewers go up. And then obviously, you know, when people get busy and stuff, goes, uh, stuff happens, the view account goes down because it's not actually valuable content. So make sure you do at least one valuable article because then people can talk about you. People can share it. The idea of this should be, will people share this? Is this something that people are going to go, oh my God, you need to read this. So you need, once a month, you need your oh my God article. It needs to be a, oh my God. Like, oh my God, that's amazing. Or, oh my God, you need to read this. Or, oh my God, have you seen this? This needs to be your, oh my God. Please like my comments. I know, right? Terrible. Although I did a really funny, I, and this is another thing. Consider, consider, your, um, consider your content that you're creating. I did an article on my Facebook feed. You might have seen it about life coaches the other day. And it had a lot of interaction. I was cracking up. I thought it was brilliant. But that wasn't a business-related article. That was purely an article because it's what I see in the world around me. And I was just making humour of a reality that a lot of people can relate, like, can relate to. So it got a lot of engagement. All right, that was that was a mixture of a lot of different things. That was a mixture of humour. That was a mixture of like reality for a lot of people. Um, you know, and so it gets engagement. There are two main ways that you can get people to engage with you, especially on social media. One is through humour. If someone likes something, well, actually, no, there's three. One is through humour. If someone likes something, they'll share it if they think it's funny. Two is by saying valuable, where they're like, oh my god, this is amazing. And the third is by polarising. If I put a Facebook status up now and says, I don't know, religion and politics, I'm not going to get into it, I really don't want to make this, like, please don't want to make this the focus, but... If you focus on religious or religion or politics and you put something religious or something political in your status, that's the quickest and easiest way to polarise an audience. And that will get a lot of interactions because when you can start a debate and you have two sides, one that likes and one that doesn't, or one that agrees and one that doesn't, that's the best way to get interaction. That's the best way. So if I turn around and say, um, oh, I mean, I don't know I was going to do it, but I don't want to do it as an example. But if I asked you a question now and I got you to, uh, to polarise, so if I turn around like, Please don't answer this. Please don't answer this because I don't want the thread to become about this. But if I turn around and said, do you believe God exists? And you started commenting saying, I think God exists or no, I don't think God exists. Then what will happen is someone will start watching the video. They'll scroll through the comments and they'll go, God, oh my God. Bleh. And then they'll comment and then it will happen. And then someone, oh, politics. Bleh. And they'll just like, and it'll be like this verbal diarrhea and they'll get into a debate and an argument and people will project themselves and then all of a sudden what you'll see is all like people, two people will get into an argument and you'll be like, oh my God, I've had like my videos gone from 200 views to 1,000 views. How's that happened? And it's normally just two people that are arguing and you're sitting there going, oh, I might delete this, but I'm like, actually no, because this is a perception of themselves, not of me. So you need to consider what works in terms of social media. What do you want to be known for? What do you want to attract? Because... You don't want to distract from the message. Remember, if you've got a key message, you don't want your comments on your social media to overtake that message. And sometimes it does. Sometimes things get carried away. I've had people before, I had someone badmouth me once and everybody comes to my rescue and it was amazing and love my friends for it. But I ended up deleting the comment because I was like, this, this troll, and that's all it was, it was a troll, was purely just doing it for bait. And so you have to be careful. So what about uh, Buddhist economy coming from the US? Yeah, well, I reckon if you were going to that, Lydia, that's, um, that's absolutely going to go, turn some heads. So my point on this is that when you're doing social media marketing, you need to understand the dynamics and how it works. You need to understand the platform and what the platform wants. So if Facebook is trying to push video, then do video. So this is the thing I want to mention to you. Once a month, you do your valuable piece. I can absolutely guarantee and tell you now that you should, on one platform, be, put, be putting content out. If you've got a business, you should be putting content out every single day. 
I don't care if it's an image, I don't care if it's a quote, I don't care if it's a video, whatever it is. I've started doing these Facebook Lives every single day, and for those of you that have followed me, and I know a few of you have, this is one thing that I'll say. I have a few people now who, who follow these every day, and I'm so grateful for you guys, because I'm giving you value and you're giving me feedback. But like Rhett, Dylan, all you guys, Steve, um, that, you know, there's, there's loads of you out there who are, who are following this every day. So what ha and that's proof that when you do something consistently at the same time, on the same day, then you start to build up a following. My, like, I hit my Facebook, um, I hit my 5,000 friends a while back. And it's really challenging for me because I know, like the, I don't add people randomly on Facebook. I've either been to an event or I've met people, I've worked with people, I've helped people, or people help me. But for some reason like normally there's a connection when I have people on Facebook it's not random people and so now I've hit 5,000 friends I find that I have to delete people to add new people and sometimes I want to add people but I can't and so I don't want to delete people because I know them so I get a bit stuck there and so what happens is obviously for those of you who know I don't teach you suck eggs but Facebook then allows people to follow you so when I started my midday mastery sessions I had about 700 followers um, I actually don't know how many followers I have now, um, but I think I stopped counting. And this is what's interesting, because I noticed this the other day. Somebody was like, oh, I'm going to get 100 subscribers on YouTube. I'm going to get 100 subscribers. Don't count, because it doesn't matter. Because you'll, you'll chase 100 subscribers, then you'll chase two, then three, then five, then a 1,000. And all right, it's good to have goals, but at the end of the day, it's the content. And if you put valuable content out there, just trust that people will come. Like That has to be the main thing. You can't go out and, and, and create content purely on the basis that you're trying to expand your reach. You have to be delivering value. So I've now got 12,500, right? Uh, oh, sorry, 1,250. So when you consider that this is purely just because of these Facebook Lives. So I've gone from seven, I've got an extra 550 followers in a month. So in one month, I've got 550 followers. Generic, organic. I haven't paid for them, I haven't done anything else, just by doing this every single day. Now, that's on Facebook. So when I do pr promote stuff and put something out there, it goes out to more people now. Now, consider that every time I do a Facebook Live video, I upload it to YouTube. And like yesterday, for example, I did a two-hour video yesterday that went up onto YouTube. Because when people go onto YouTube, normally it's for two reasons. One, it's either for a distraction... So people, and this is why you need to understand the platform you're on. People go onto YouTube as a distraction because they want to get away from stuff. That is why music videos are always going. You, you look on YouTube at the most successful videos; they're all music videos. Everything's music, all around music. The second is how to. So, and the third is shocking, shock and awe. Because there's actually three types when you think about it. So music videos, anything music related on YouTube, pff, it's up there. How-to videos, how do I do this, how do I do that, how do I create this video, how do I upload my podcast, how do I do... You know, people go to YouTube to find out how to do a Facebook Live. Right? Think about that. People go to YouTube to learn how to do a Facebook Live. YouTube and Facebook are in competition with each other, right? So you have to understand what value are you adding, what are you doing? Because in your world, in your marketplace, you can add value. And I challenge you now. In fact, let's set a little challenge out there because I know a lot of people have been doing this lately. I challenge you every single day at a specific time. In fact, in the comments below, I want you to tell me what time you are going to do your broadcast. I call it a broadcast because I don't want it to be a Facebook Live. Whatever, whatever works for you in your industry. It's either going to be a blog post, it's going to be an Instagram post, it's going to be a Snapchat, it's going to be a Facebook Live, it's going to be a YouTube video, whatever it is. Every single day I want you to post a piece of content at a certain time in day. I want you to let me know what platform, what media and what time. Please let me know below. I'm going to hold you to this. So if you are willing to do this, I am willing to hold you accountable. Because every single day I want you to tag me on that platform when you go live or when you do it. And I will watch you and I will make the time to help, uh, to help you with your exposure and I will share it as well. So if you're willing to do that, I'm willing to help you. So every single day and do it for, commit for two weeks, not the weekend, Monday to Friday. So we're asking for 10 days, 10 days every single day. I take your challenge, fantastic. So this is what I want you to do. What media are you gonna put out there? And let me just 
I want to finish on this because this is quite important. I want to give you a strategy. I want to give you a strategy to use and I want to give you something to consider. When you're, right, when you're doing your content, there are four main types of content, okay? We've got written, and that's at the bottom, okay? We've got images. We've got audio, and then we've got video. So these are the four main types of content, okay? Now, when you consider, they go in this order as well. I'm actually going to put them in this because it makes it look official. So when you consider written content, this can be anything. So whatever you write. The problem is when you write it, that's all you can do with it. When you consider images, you can use an image and you can also take the image and you can write about the image. A picture paints a thousand words, right? So you have two options now. You have your image and you have the writing that goes with the image. Now, audio. When you, when, when you record audio, you've got audio that people can listen to. But also, you can put an image to that audio, and also, you can transcribe that audio into writing. So now you have, you can take that audio and you can do three things with it. Or video. Let's take video. This is the creme de, This is why video marketing is so important. Because with video, you can extract the audio. You can extract a screenshot from the video, and you can transcribe the video. So you now have four different mediums of content. Does that make sense? So you really, 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 if you can, anything you do, testimonials, content, whatever you do, you want to make sure you, if you can, do video. At least start with video. If you're not confident in front of a video, then record something else. And if you're really not confident, then get PowerPoint presentation, record your audio over slides. Okay, record your audio over slides to give you video. And upload that to YouTube and put it on Facebook and do whatever it is you need to do. So now... This is your content strategy. This is what you should do. I mentioned that once a month, you should write one well-written article. Okay? So, my con I've got two content strategies that I'm going to give you now. Uh, and this is more regarding sort of blogging on websites. I'm going to give you these and then we're going to go. We're going to end it. So, draw this line down the middle. The first one is once a month. You pick one day a month and you have four bullet points. Those four bullet points are four different articles that you want to talk about. That could be, um, for example, if I'm talking about websites, it could be security, um, it could be SEO, it could be content, it could be whatever it's going to be. So I have one overarching subject, like what I talked about before, uh, one overarching subject, and then what I do is I have four topics, okay? So let's just say I'm going to have security. That's going to be what I'm going to talk about, website security. So that... It's going to be my one, oh my God, like the valuable piece of content. I'm going to create an amazing article around website security, which I probably bought a crap out of you, but someone might enjoy it. So that's going to be my content piece. Now, I will break this down into four different things. So, for example, it might be um, someone that got hacked. It could be like Sony or something. I might do an article or when like um, yeah, a big company got attacked or something went down. Uh, I might do horror stories. I might interview some people to do horror stories. Um, I might do something else, and I might do something else. I might have a, so I've got four different things. Then what I would do is I'd take out my camera or my film or my, my iPhone or get in the studio, whatever I'm going to do, and I would record four five-minute videos. Okay? Four five-minute videos, one on each topic. So one thing... That, now, if you're going to do interviews, that's going to take a little bit more work, but... You, I'll, I'll do a five minute video on hacking, I'll do a five minute video on um, uh, best practice, you know, uh, five minute videos on horror stories, whatever it's going to be. Now, what you do at the end of that, that's going to take you 20 minutes, yeah, five minutes for each. Let's add another five minutes in between each one, all right? So that's going to be 40 minutes, and let's just add a 40 minute buffer. So we're talking about an hour. That's one hour of your time. Once a month, that is one hour once a month. What you do is you take the video and you upload it to a website called rev.com and they transcribe it and it costs you $1 per minute. Okay, so you've now got 20 minutes of video that's just cost you $20. What they've now done is they'll send you back a transcription. So for $20 and for an hour of your time, you now have four videos, you now have four transcriptions. All right, you can take a screenshot of each one, you've now got four images. And you can sit and you can say, I'm going to take a little bit of content out of each one. I'm going to take some snapshots. And you can create an entire month's worth of social media. So now you've got your content plan. That is a way. That is a content plan. Does that make sense? 
please let me know. Let's go for some of those little likes and hearts if we like that because I'm going to give you another content plan. So this is what I'm going to do. This content plan number one. And I want to see which one you prefer. So content plan number one. So give me some likes if you like this content plan. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you another content plan and I want to know which one you prefer. So there's a couple, a few people like that. That's all right. Right, let me give you the other one. This is my new content plan. So that was my old one. It's what I was using and it works very, very well. Clients have done very, like, you'll get some consistency with that. That's the old content plan. Make sense? Four videos, five minutes each, upload them to YouTube. And in fact, you can do four Facebook Lives if you want, and then you can take them and put them into YouTube, whatever you want to do. But that's what, that should be the old idea behind the one wow article. And I do, I do still do this, and I do still recommend this. So that's, that's, that's one idea. The second idea, uh, or the second, not even idea, sorry, the second content creation, would you, do the, would you do the videos live? You can do. If you're confident in doing that, I mean, there's a different energy and a different dynamic. What I would say is if you're going to do a live video for this, I probably wouldn't interact that much with the audience. I would probably, like where I'm talking to you guys now, this is, this is for this. If I'm, if I'm going to get a specific piece across and I'm going to talk, then I would probably just sit at a camera, I would talk, I would do my Facebook Live and I would end it. And then I would interact in the comments afterwards. Because that way, and I wouldn't mention Facebook, I wouldn't mention the platform, because then when you put it onto YouTube, there's no mention of it. See, because if I'm sitting here talking to you guys now, and then I put it onto YouTube, and someone's watching it back later, they'll be like, I don't get it. Because out of context, I'm just talking to myself, right? So when I do upload this to YouTube, which I will, because publish is better than perfect, and I want to interact with you guys, people are going to be like, but then in my description, it's like, this is from a Facebook Live, go to here to see it. Oh, by the way, new subscribers or new likes, right? And it works the other way as well. I could, in the bottom of this, I could, and I do this, you'll see it. I'll say, because here's the reason I do this on YouTube. The reason I do this on YouTube is for you guys. I don't do it for additional exposure. I do it for you guys because it's very hard to track. When you do this consistently and you do this daily, like why do you think I'm doing episode one, episode two, episode three? So I can track my progress and how we're doing. I've got a playlist on YouTube. So you can go through and you can view these and they're all in one place. You try and go, try and go back through my newsfeed and find episode four. I've posted about four million articles since then. You're never going to find it. At least in YouTube, it's all in one place. So Facebook's not very good at structuring the content. It's good for getting the content out there. But YouTube's much better for structuring the videos. So, again, understand pros and cons, weaknesses and that. Here's the second one that I want to give you, okay? So, the second one is that you set yourself this target of every single day you post. So, set time. Uh, set piece of content. One thing. Talk about one article at a set time every day. So, it, the, the content can change daily, but the time stays the same. Right, and set platform. So, for example, at 12 o'clock, I am going to talk about whatever it is I'm going to talk about on Facebook, on a live. Okay, that's my strategy. So, just by doing that, you again are getting content out there. So, this is a different content strategy. Now, you might get to the point, oh, and also, when I set the time, also, I would set a timer. So I'm going to do like, like Nigel Bottrell used to do this. He used to do the nine, Nigel's nine o'clock nuggets, you know, and I'm doing midday mastering. Like there's, diff there's different things and you can do whatever works for people. But I would set something that works, set something out that works for you at a time. Try and limit it. I mean, like, don't take my advice on this. I've gone over on 38 minutes. I'm going to end this now. Hopefully it's been valuable. But the idea behind this is that you have a set amount of time because then people can expect it. I'm fucking terrible. Like I'm not. I'm gonna five minutes, ten minutes. I'm gonna do this for. 20. I never do, and it's because I want to keep giving value. But you need to respect your audience, and I want to respect you guys. So if you guys have set fifteen minutes aside, because if you know every day this is only gonna be fifteen minutes, and you can set that time aside, that's great. Or you can watch it back later, but you don't want to go on too much, like I am now, right? You want to end it so that people can get on with their day and do shit. Noted. Set the content, what you're going to talk about, okay, and then set the platform. So this is a more sort of agile, a more sort of um, a, a more flexible approach to creating content. But especially on sort of social media platforms, it's a really good way to get your exposure. So this is what I would do for exposure, and I would do this on a daily basis. And the other one 
the, the first one I told you about, I would do as a one article a month and I would gear all of that and push. So the four different videos that you do on the first one I mentioned, all push into a central theme. Right, so if I was going to talk about security that like I mentioned, that's the central theme. All of the things go around this central theme. And all of this, like these can talk about different things, but again, they can link towards this. Because what you're trying to do is get as much attention to this one thing as possible a month. And that's how you progress, and that's how you do it. So, I've got a few likes and a few thumbs up for this. Who prefers the second content strategy of just every day, just doing a little bit of a, more of a documenting? Because if you've got no content, like if you've got no, if you don't feel like you've got any value, if you don't think, then just document. Okay, so this is what I've done today. Because like when you consider Instagram and Facebook, most people are just telling you what they've had for lunch. Most people are just uploading what they're doing with their day. Because like social media is, you know, it's all about us. It's about us portraying, it's about us being heard and having a voice and being out there. And we might say it's about other people, but the reality is most people who are on there are doing it for themselves. You know, oh, this is me, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, hold on a sec. Let me just get the right background. Can you see that behind me? Social filters, hashtag InstaLive. Uh, and I did a talk about this on the weekend. So the content, yeah, I like. I, I kind of like. I, I'm more geared towards the second one. The reason I'm more geared towards the second one is because I love the interaction. I love talking to you guys. I love the Facebook lives. Like Facebook Live is my platform. I love it. I'm great. Um, well, I, I think I'm great. I don't want to be. Like, oh, I'm great on it. But if I have to sit and write a blog post, I'm like, oh, I've got to do a blog post. I don't want to do it. I don't enjoy it. And so I don't put the content out there, and it's not as good. But this, I've had some amazing Facebook lives. And on YouTube, I've had some video. I've got videos on YouTube that have got sort of 20, 30, 40,000 views. So video is definitely my, my preferred platform. you just got to work out what's best for you. If it's not video, don't do it. I'm not telling you to do video if you don't want to. I'm just saying that video, it engages really well. It's preferred on most platforms, so they're pumping it out and you're getting more exposure for it. Uh, it's an easy way to get your message across and you can, as I mentioned before, you can use it in other areas. So you can take the content, you can take the written, you can take the audio and the images from that. So look, SEO is great, consider it, but don't worry about it too much. Social media marketing is where you want to be in a business, especially if you're trying to put it out there. But social media marketing is really for the free organic traffic and a way to test theories. You really want to be on pay-per-click, PPC. right? You want to be doing things like paid Facebook ads, paid Instagram ads, Google AdWords, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm driving away from that. I'm not saying you can't. I mean, it is very successful. There are people that are doing extremely well from it. I'm just, it depends on what, it depends on your target audience. At the end of the day, you need to know who is your customer and where they are. All right. If everyone's on, like, if you're talking to like corporate business owners and you're looking at high level executive managers, then chances are they're not going to be on Snapchat. All right. They're going to be on LinkedIn. So start creating a content platform and profile and doing LinkedIn posts every day. And so every day you want to do a LinkedIn post around, you know, and, it, and you need to pick a subject and pick a topic and push towards that. But this is the 10 day challenge I want you to do. Right, I want you to do this for the next 10 days. Or in fact, just keep going. Don't just do it for 10 days, but commit to 10 days. Make a commitment right now to yourself, not to me, to yourself, that you are going to post once a day, every day, something valuable around your business on the platform where your audience is. And you're going to do that. And before you start, Notice how many followers you have. Notice how many friends you have. Notice how many people are engaging with you. Consistently at the same time for 10 days. 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one post, whatever it's going to be. Get that consistency for 10 days and monitor where you was and where you are. Because I promise you, I guarantee you will have more engagement. Now, the very, very last final, 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 final thing I'm going to say is I'm going to share a story with you that Caleb Maddox, who I was on stage with at the end of last year, is a great kid, great, I don't want to say kid, it's a bit disrespectful to him, he's a great guy, um, you know, he's 14 at the time, he's 15 now, 14 year old, making 100 grand a year, his dad's amazing, um, he taught me the uh, the story about uh, Lily, about not doing chores, like not getting paid for chores, um, because you should be expected to do your chores, you get paid for reading, because... You know, and that's what I do with Lily now. She's got a load of books. If she reads a book and writes a report on it, that's how she gets her pocket money. She doesn't get it through chores. Uh, and so Caleb's dad taught me that. I thought that was a really good lesson. But what Caleb taught me was how he was on a periscope and he was doing his periscope and he had one viewer. 
And there are times when I do Facebook Lives when I have no viewers. And I know, I can see it, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I am talking to myself. But I'm doing it because I know that people will watch it back later. And so even if you have just one viewer, if there is just one person on your Facebook Live, still give it 100%. Don't sit there in your head going, oh, I've only got one person, oh, I've only, oh, there's only one person watching me, mm, nobody loves me, oh, my stuff's not good enough. Like, fuck off, get rid of that. Let it go, because it's not serving you. The reason it's not serving you is because when Caleb did it, he had one viewer. He was on a periscope, he had one viewer, and he said, you know what, I was considering ending the broadcast. I was going to leave the broadcast. I was like, one viewer, it is not worth my time to do this. But he didn't. He said, you know what, he said, someone's actually watching me. Someone's actually giving me their time. And someone's actually prepared to sit and listen to me. I'm going to play full out. I'm going to give them everything I've got. And so he did. He said he was, he, he gave it everything he had on his periscope and he went for it. And it turns out that that one viewer was Diane Cardone. And if you don't know who she is, she's the sister of Grant Cardone. And if you don't know who he is, then Google him because he's a huge, huge name in America and he's doing some amazing stuff, but he's got a massive, massive following. And she said, Caleb, I love what you're doing. I think it's amazing. I want to put you in touch with my brother. So she put him in touch with Grant Cardone, who now I believe mentors Caleb along with, like, Caleb's got, like, Russell Brunson. I don't know if Gary Vaynerchuk's there, but I know that um, Grant Cardone is. So this, like, Caleb's going places. He's doing really well. And he's a great kid as well. Great guy. Not kid, he's a guy. And so my point is that even if there's just one person, you do not know who that person is. Like, if you're a coach and you're trying to inspire and motivate someone, that person that's watching could be the person that's going to kill themselves today. And you may make the difference. If you've got one business owner who's frustrated, you could be the that, that could be the person that doesn't go home and shout at their wife tonight. You know, if you've got someone who's stressed and who's trying to make their like their business work and they're struggling and you give them some advice and it works for that one person, they might actually go home and spend time with their kids tonight. You know, if you've got one person who's watching your video who's got a big network and they resonate with you, they may tweet or they may like whatever it is you're doing and they may put you out to their network. Because when that happened to Caleb, he went from one viewer to thousands of viewers. Literally, Grant was like, check this out, and he's, he just blew up. So he'd been working and creating videos for like six, seven, eight months before that, where there was like one, two, three viewers, no viewers. Like He just kept going and kept going and kept going. And then on that one day, that one day when he actually put that piece out and decided in that moment, I'm going to go for it, and the right person was watching, it was because of consistency. It was because he kept going. He didn't give up. He didn't just go, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. He just kept going. So set yourself this target. Give yourself this gift. 10 days. 10 days. Pick a platform. Pick a subject. 10 days. Just go hard. Just make sure you do it. Play full out and see the difference. And then come back here and tell me if this doesn't work. Because if it doesn't work for you, look, I'll sit and watch all your content. So you'll at least get me as a new viewer. Because I know, I know through my proof, through my following, through what's happening with me, and everyone that I talk to who does this, and all of the people who are successful, everyone who does this, this works. You just need to make the commitment. Remember, content. Get content out there. But make sure it's contextual content. Content needs to be valuable. Don't just put out tripe for the sake of it. Make it valuable. Make sure that you're impacting people, that you're making a difference and you're doing it for the right reasons. You will make money on the back of it, I promise. You will get more followers on the back of it, I promise. But make sure that the core message is to deliver value, to teach someone, to educate, to inspire, to motivate, whatever that needs to be for you. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.